The feature bot in this video is 1987's Generation 1 Target Master Slug Slinger. Now, Slug Sling. <laughs> Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. This video is sponsored by ToyHacks.com. They're your one-stop shop for reproduction decals for your vintage G1 Transformers and upgrade decals for your modern bots. Weaponry for your figures from the Toy Hacks Armory and great looking backdrops for your display from Toy Stages. And when you visit ToyHacks.com, make sure and use my monthly promo code to save 15% off your order. So yes, 15% off when you use my promo code right here. So check out ToyHacks.com and make your collection stand out from the rest. And tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the video. The feature bot in this video is 1987's Transformers Generation 1 Target Master Slug Slinger. Now, Slug Slinger here hitting the toy shelves in 1987 more or less guaranteed him a spot in the final season of the Transformers animated series, where it was shown that he was one of Galvatron's troops that was sent off to Nebulos to track down the Autobots and retrieve the key to the plasma energy chamber. Now, Slug Slinger in the animated series really didn't do much. I mean, the only part I remember is when he first gets his Target Master partner. Hey, you can call me Calibers, because I never missed a shot in my life. But you've never taken a shot in your life. See what I lied to you? And that's about it. I mean, cool looking figure just didn't do anything in the show. And pretty much that was the same thing with Marvel Comics. He appeared in issue number one of the Transformers Headmaster series, where it was shown that he was part of Scorpinox troops that went to Nebulos to get the Autobots. And once again, he was in a couple panels, and that's it. As far as I remember, I don't know anything else that Slug Slinger ever did than appear just here and there. So that's pretty much it for the history of Slug Slinger. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at this awesome G1 Transformer. Don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. Now we'll start things off by taking a look at Slug Slinger in his vehicle mode. And I love this jet. This is some sort of dual cockpit or dual nose cone Cybertronian jet. And it just looks awesome. Another one of my favorite G1 jets. Now, unfortunately, my Slug Slinger here is showing his age. As you can see, all of this, what was once glorious white, has yellowed over the 30 plus years this guy's been around and I never really noticed it until I took him down for this video because in robot mode you see the underside of the wings and they're not too bad so I may be in the market for a new slug slinger I mean other than the discoloration he's still a great toy so taking a closer look at this guy love the sculpted details throughout it just looks so good he's got blue translucent cockpits right there uh, like I said, lots of details here. He does have brand new Toy Hex decals. Well, I guess they're not brand new. I've had Slug Slinger here for quite a few years, and the decals were crap. So I ended up getting the Toy Hex Repro labels to make him look a lot better. And I swear he was a lot more white back then, but it is what it is. He's still a glorious looking jet. You do flip him around and you can see a robot underneath. You've got the arms right there, folded up legs. So, you know, pretty typical for G1s. You can always see with the jet mode that there's a robot underneath. Now let's get into his Target Master partner, Caliburst, that I do not have. So there's a picture of him right there. So I'm going to bring in Trigger Happy's partner, Blowpipe, to kind of go over the Target Master a little bit. Now, the big difference between Blowpipe here and Caliburst, Caliburst has a single barrel where Blowpipe here has two. 
Now, unfortunately, Blowpipe has the same issue all of the larger Target Masters have, the larger Decepticon Target Masters, that is, with the clipped on section right there for the joint. Uh, I have no idea why they screwed us over with the Decepticons so much with those clipped on joints. So for Blowpipe here, I gotta be very careful to transform it. Well, let's show off robot mode a little bit first. Still wanna be very careful. Okay, so with these guys, with Blowpipe and Caliburst, they have a little extra piece, which is the barrel right there. You can have it sticking up off his back like so, or I display it like that so you don't see the barrel sticking up. The Target Master himself has no articulation whatsoever other than the clip joint to turn him into gun mode. So let's go ahead and do that once again. You can take this off and you can actually use this as a blaster itself. It will peg in, see on top of the jet like so. So you can do that if you so choose or we'll just go with the full blaster here. Let's go ahead and get him transformed, nice and drop him nice and slow nice and steady i don't want to break him so you just fold him over like so and then you peg in the blaster right there so there you go there is well blowpipe in gun mode so to display him in gun mode for the jet you just peg it right there on top i'm not a big fan of that i do not like it just he loses all of his aerodynamic look with that big jet, big gun on top. So yeah, not a fan. Now I do want to bring up something real quick. Uh, I pointed out many times that the, the clip joints suck on Decepticon Target Masters during my Misfire video. Someone commented that I was wrong with all the Decepticon Target Masters having the clips. I should have reiterated or made it known that it was only the larger Decepticon Target Masters that have clips because the smaller ones, like Tip Top here from Quake, they used the pin system. So you don't have to worry about these guys breaking. You can transform them over and over again. No problem whatsoever. So they learned a thing or two from the clips. Unfortunately, the Autobot larger Target Masters, they use the pins as well and you have no problem transforming these guys. Don't know why they went with clips for the Decepticons. So enough ranting about the Target Masters, let's go ahead and get Slug Slinger transformed into his robot mode. And to do this, oh, I did forget to show he has landing gear. So we're gonna flip the landing gear up on the wings and there's a landing gear right here that goes underneath his chest. Just lock that into place like so. First thing we're gonna do is unpeg the legs right here flip the feet up and rotate those around just like so for the back here take the nose cone bring up and fold down along the top the head is on the spring just reach your finger in and it'll pop right up it locks in place by pushing down and up so push down and just let go the head pops right up now we got the fists we need to get out and the fists on mine are really tight to get out. That one's not too bad, but I believe this one is the really tight one. So let's see. Nope, not bad either. So there we have Slug Slinger in robot mode, and I need to adjust this camera. In robot mode, Slug Slinger looks awesome. I love the looks of this Decepticon. Taking a closer look at him, he has got a fantastic head sculpt with a great paint job. He's got kind of pinkish goggles with a white face. He's got the blue helmet right there. The new decals, once again, from Toy Hacks. And Toy Hacks even include these chrome decals that went over the little sections that was painted chrome on the original figure. So if yours is faded off, if yours is faded out, you got those decal options right there. Moving on down, the other decals are here on the shins, and that's about it. Now, I said before, he's not as yellowed looking in robot mode. Man, when he's on camera with all these lights shining on him, he is yellowed. So I really may want to take a look online, see if I can find another slug slinger. But last time I looked, I mean, you're looking at almost $50 to $60 for the bot by himself. 
And to find one with caliber, my God, you're looking at 200 bucks. So anyway, let's get into articulation for this guy. He doesn't have much. The arms here can go up like so. There's an elbow bend and there's a knee bend and that's it. Not a lot of articulation for Slug Slinger. Now let's go ahead and get him armed up with Blowpipe. We'll pretend it's caliber, caliber. Man, I cannot talk tonight. So I'm gonna peg him in like so. And there you have Slug Slinger, all armed and ready for battle. A great looking G1 Decepticon. And now for some quick size comparisons, here is 1987's Generation 1 Slug Slinger with Generation 1 Megatron, Generation 1 Misfire, Generation 1 Quake, and Titan's Return Slug Slinger. 1987's Generation 1 Target Master Slug Slinger is a great Transformers toy. He's got an awesome jet mode, an awesome robot mode, and if he had it, he'd have an awesome Target Master partner. Now, in case you're wondering, I forgot I had the, ah, oh, what were these guys called? The uh, Siege Battlemasters. I have Siege Battlemaster Caliburst here, and I believe he will fit in his hand. Yep, no problem whatsoever. So you can combine some old and some new to complete your Caliburst if you so choose. I, for one, when I display mine, I use an old Combiner Wars weapon. I plug it in and he looks just as good on this shelf. So yeah, if you have the other three Decepticon Target Masters, then Slug Slinger is a must. But as I said earlier, this guy is expensive. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new videos. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I do have a super thanks button, and I also offer channel memberships. And I have to give a huge shout out and thank you to all my current channel members because it is support like yours that helps keep this channel going. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime signing out. Hoo-ah!